Good evening, boys and girls. Uh, a good question I've addressed this many times, and the reason I've addressed it many times is because I personally don't have the answer to it. I have theories and speculation. I think this is a topic that's going to affect more and more people as fewer and fewer of you have children. Um, and you're like, okay, what's the point and purpose of life? But then you're going to see whatever friends and colleagues you have disappear. And it will be of no doing of your own. You you will not have offended them. People are perfectly fine with you. I've had many covers like, dude, did I say something to you guys? They're like, no, oh my God. Oh no. Well, then where the fuck are you? Bringing up a, a great philosophical point, like, well, if we're not going to hang out, then why are we friends? Not like, I, not that you don't like the individual, but people in your life disappear. And um, when you don't have kids or you get your finances together and you don't fuck up, uh, there's a generation of young men and some women, too. We do have some women listeners here who are going to play their cards right who are going to listen and apply the wisdom we've had, you know, I, I don't know how many, that my financial wisdom, the red pill, the manosphere, whatever, these harshly truth, cold truths. It, people are, a lot of you are investing in it. We just, I did a video about a guy who became an electrician. You are going to make these investments. You are going to leapfrog me and the old farts. You're going to leapfrog Roosh. You're going to leapfrog me. You're going to leapfrog Rolo. And you're going to leapfrog our, our favorite bald-headed Canadian, Rich Cooper. You will be better by the time you're in your mid-40s than we are. You'll be at our, our stage by the time you're 32, 33, if that even. Maybe even in your late 20s. And then you'll be like, what the fuck is everyone? <laughs> what happened? Wait, what? Why is no one here? Thought we were on the same page. What's going on? So let's go through the email. <clears throat> Young man writes, hey, Cap, big fan of your videos and podcasts. I'm happy with just an email response that you ended up paying for a video anyway. I'll keep my eye on my spam folder. Let me know what dollar amount is, and I'll send payment your way. I have a question that I haven't seen addressed in any of your past videos, so I thought it was worth asking. I'm 35 years old, married, and we have zero plans on having kids. In fact, my wife and I high-fived each other at the start of the Corona chain. I told her, thank Christ, we don't have any kids. Yeah, no, it, it, I wouldn't bring kids in this world. I didn't. That's why I had a vasectomy over 10 years ago. Ah, good coffee. I'm slowly waking up, slowly waking up. I may just go for a walk instead of a run, too. When I was getting closer to 30, I started to notice it was getting harder to hang out with my friends. As we got older, getting them to hang out was like pulling teeth and just all around tiring. Now I've just accepted that when I see friends is when I'll see them. That's a very wise approach. I forgot what video of yours it was, but you were 100% right about people either don't have the money, time, or energy. Uh, yes, the trifecta. So my best friends I've had, their wives crapped out kids, and now we don't see each other as often as we want. Others are just fat, lazy, or complacent in bad relationships. I've just accepted this and moved on. Mostly I'll play Call of Duty or FIFA with my original core group of friends who either have families or live in different cities. I also go fishing, play golf, play PC games, and work on house projects. I'm not really into Myers-Briggs, but I'm probably more extroverted than introverted. And overall, I just like to keep busy. Right. I bet you you're thin too. I mean, not a rail thin like me, but you're in shape because you got to do something. In Curse of the High IQ, you talk about the importance of finding friends online. I'm curious, how did you meet and grow relationships like Chad, DT, Jack Napier, Joker, Great One, Masculines, Mary Jo, etc.? Well, those aren't friends. I don't have any. They're not friends of mine. I got standards, man. Mary Jo? Masculine geeks? I, they pay Their parents pay me to hang out with them. Kid. Did you meet these guys through specific sites, online group forums, or did they come by way of your blog and YouTube channel? I would like to find better quality friends, and as you pointed out in your book, you'll find better quality and more like-minded people rather online than where you live. I understand there are a million ways to skin a cat. What worked for you to meet friends online may not work for someone else. However, I thought it was worth asking. It might give me some ideas. I forgot what video you said, but you said when it comes to having friends online, you have to be like the U.S. military and go to them. Absolutely. You have to bring the war to them. Because they lack one of those three things, the money, the time, or the energy, or youth. And that's what I've had to do. Now, it also doesn't help that I live in, like, arguably the shittiest state in the United States. No one wants to, oh, let's go to Minneapolis. Why? For snow? For people to riot and burn shit down in traffic and sanctimonious liberal white people who just can't wait to flay themselves? Why? Why would you come here? But you have theater. No, we don't. 
Here we go. <clears throat> uh, directly you have to be the one to jump in a plane or jump in your car and go see them so regardless of how i meet like-minded people online i might have to be the one to visit them which i'm fine with i used to visit my college friends in my 20s i usually go out and fly to visit my family nowadays i'm more motivated socially than most people so i put forth the extra effort hope all's well let me know what the charge is to keep making awesome videos and podcasts thanks jp all right you are 100 percent correct and your theories as to why your friends leave. They don't they don't abandon you. Let's be very clear. They don't leave. It's just life happens. Some of it is legitimate. Uh, I joined the military. They're telling me I got to go to Iraq and kill brown people. All right. Well, I guess we'll see you when you get back. So you're not going to see Frank. Live it is a career. They pull them off and they get involved in the career. But what's really crippling and sad, especially... You know, assuming you're you're on the higher end of the bell distribution curve, which I am going to assume of every listener tuning in, because you can't be a dumb person and tune in here. Is you think they're going to be with you, like they're going to hang out with you, they're going to be there, then and then they succumb to the regular normie conforming inferior bullshit. And this is proof that IQ is not an inoculation against other I don't want to call them vices, but weaknesses within the human psyche. For example, there's plenty of brilliant people. The Young Turks, for example, those are all IQ, almost geniuses, I'd say. Uh, but they're highly corruptible. They're they're emotional. They lack a, a principle. You you can be a high IQ and unethical. Um, that doesn't mean or guarantee ethics. <laughs> um, same thing with your friends. Not that politics is going to sway them, but I know one guy in particular where. He was really cool. I loved hanging out with him. Well, now his wife just doesn't like me, you know, and I'm not allowed at the house anymore. Uh, and I didn't do anything. I honestly, I didn't. But but there's something, you know, the perfect little world where wifey poo is slightly upset, slightly inconvenienced. Uh, and I don't see that buddy anymore. He succumbed instead of laying down like, I'm going to hang out with my friends and fuck you. Uh, my best friend back in college, we lived, <laughs> we lived, brilliant guy, great guy. We lived a block and a half away from each other. He had this wonderful girlfriend. I think they're married now. They'll probably be married forever because she was a wonderful girl. And once he got pussy, once he never would see him, like, let's go. I hung out with his girlfriend at the time, probably now wife. More than I did with him in the last two years uh, of our relationship because I she'd be she wanted like let's go and it's like once he got her it was weird like he just wanted to stay at home and watch TV apparently and this girl was fun she'd like well let's go let's go ride around in the car I'm like yeah I'll pick you up let's go when's my buddy coming out I try to get him out of that and she'd be like let's go to it. something happens man. Something happens, but no matter what, it, it could be a, a burdensome wife. It could be they just get lazy and fat. It could be they're tired. It could be their career. Whatever it is, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. That, that's out of your control. And what you have to do is take your hat off, put it on your heart. That's the way that one went and move on. Then comes, as you pointed out, internet, which... It is not the same as meeting people in person, but it's the only thing we got, and I'm eternally grateful for it. So when you mention all my buddies, Chad, DT, Jack Napier, Joker, Joker I've never met. <clears throat> I'd say we have more of a professional relationship. Great one, geeks, Mary Jo, I've met all of them. Did I mean uh, through specific sites? Or did they come to you by way of your blog or YouTube channel? Predominantly, not to sound like a dick, but predominantly they found me because of my presence on the internet. Um, I reached out to Joker, uh, but most of these other guys was predominantly through my works or, or social media. Mary Jo, I met, um, what was it? Uh, Major Miller. Uh, we, we had friends in common on the internet and she was cute. I'm like, Hey, I'll friend her. And then her and I immediately went back and forth and <laughs> like a little brat sister you never wanted. Who's Latina? So you have to wash your hands. Like I get the Latin germs off. Like ah, oh, I'm infected. I'm gonna start speaking Spanish. You want to eat tapas? Oh, whew, thank God. I almost had a hankering for refried greens, which is the most disgusting fucking food ever. 
Do you want refried beans? No, I don't want something that looks like diarrhea. Get that fucking shit out of here. Anyway, point being, um, that is now the new way to meet people. It's easy. It's efficient. But then to your third or fourth point, yeah, you meet these great people online and they're great. And that's what's great about the internet is it filters out. Like you find people that are kindred spirits. You go hang out with the masculine geeks. You don't, you, you know how, when you know you have real friends is when they make fun of you for potentially having cancer. That is how, you know, you got really good friends. Um, the great one crashed at his place. You just knew and we hung out, but all of them, except maybe Vince over at the masculine geeks. Yeah. You know, the, the regular, uh, not everybody gets to be as lucky as me, you know, where you got the time, the money and the youth. I would almost say the flexibility, we should add a fourth variable there where I can work online and do my job anywhere. So there's, a small but growing group of the population that are digital nomads who also have the money, the youth, and the incentive to go out and like live life. But life is pretty boring with other people or without other people. So then when you go and look for your buddies from the olden days in college, they're not there because they don't have those four traits. And they have probably anchored themselves to some other institution within society, like a career or, or a wife or a husband. And there's nothing wrong with that. They've committed, they've invested in those things. That's good. But once you hit your thirties, most people, they're going to go one of two ways. They're either going to have a family and you're not going to see them because they should be investing in their children. Or they're just going to get fat and lazy and old. And they're just, they've lost their energy. They've lost their spirit of life. And so what it boils down to, it it sounds like with you and your wife, you guys sound like dinks, double income, no kids. You guys, you're forced to. You're going to meet some great people online. And a lot of these people, uh, just they're not going to have those four critical things, flexibility, money, youth, and time. Okay, now if you guys got it, yeah. Now you're the United States military of friendship and you got to bring your friendship to other people. You have to go and visit them. Have I had people visit me in Minneapolis? Yes, but they were predominantly retired people. Glorious Carl, Sergeant Greg, Chad made it out here one time. Um, uh, Jay, Jay made it out here, but Jay, Jay's IT guy, uh, really well doing. Uh, I think retired, yeah, retired Navy. Uh, so th there are some people that will come out, but for the most part, you got to go. And you know what's sad about that is it's not your regular buddies at the local bar. It's not regular. These are people you see once every six months, if that even. Uh, and you're very happy when you see them. But they're not, I, they are a part of your life, but they're not part of your regular day-to-day -day life. And you desperately wish they would. You wish they were your neighbor. You totally do. But that is the new normal. That is, you know, everyone wants solutions. Well, the solution is very complicated and difficult. You got to fly to where they go. Same thing I tell Chad. Look, you want to meet a girl, you got to fly out there. Uh, the <clears throat> Both on men and women's side, this is not just women. I know we, we disproportionately slam on women because they disproportionately make stupid fucking decisions and have stupid fucking ideas. But men have been equally stupid in this as the women where I say, hey, there's this girl I know. Um, kind of fits your requirements. Nice gal. Why, why don't you guys meet? Well, where does she live? Well, she, she lives in... Uh, Chan Hassan, Atham, look it up. Way to fuck on the west south side. But I'm in Stillwater. That's like all the way across the metro. Oh, my God. No, like, yeah, because true love isn't worth like 50-mile drive. Ha, huh, dumbass. You guys couldn't like move closer together. I mean, the the laziness, and you, you hit it up. They're so lazy. They're not willing to do it. But if you're willing to do, and this is why I point out with Chad, like I think the, the future of dating, especially for high IQ individuals, that, I'm not kissing your asses, just pointing it out, is where you set your dating parameters to the entire United States or whatever country you're respectively in. And you're willing to spend the $300 to get a flight out there and back because you know going on a bunch of shitty dates with a, a bunch of shitty local people 
is likely not going to result in anything. But if you use the internet, uh, and this is the context of dating, but it could also be friends, but you will naturally screen and find people you cherish, <clears throat> whether romantically or friendshiply. If that's a word, but it is not because I'm a professional author. It's worth it for the 300 bucks to go flat. Like I, my buddy Marco, he's in Switzerland. It was great. I'm so happy I flew out there. He was a wonderful Dan. Dan was over in uh, near Geneva, and he and I was like, "Dang, man, it's good." Yeah, thanks, thanks. Never met him before, but just great fellows, great guys. And is it what you want? Like, are you going to have this group of people that go for cocktails like it was when you were in your twenties, and then you had dancing and jazz, and everything was wonderful, and you slept with half the women in your group? <laughs> No, it's not going to go back to that. It's not because in your 20s, people had time, but they didn't have money. But they had time. What little money they had, they go and make account. And they had no obligations. But once you get out, oh man, people lose the spirit of life. They lose the reason to live. And it's so depressing because I'm like, come on. It, <laughs> I know you have kids. I know you have a wife who got fat on you. That doesn't mean we can't go golf. Let's go. One, another guy. They're in Phoenix. I hope you're listening, assholes, because I love you. His wife can't drive more than two hours without freaking the fuck out. Well, that causes problems when your family's in the Twin Cities and you're in Phoenix. So she and the kids will fly from Phoenix to Minneapolis, because Phoenix gets hot during the summer, so they come to the Twin Cities. Because summer is nice in the Twin Cities, that's true. And he'll drive. I'm like, oh, well, wait. If you're going, I know all that. Da, da, da. There's this place and that place. You take a week, you'll enjoy it. The greatest thing. Da, da. What does he do every time? He doesn't go the way I tell him. He goes straight east on 40, shoots up Albuquerque, then he cuts through Nebraska or Kansas because it's the shortest route. No, it goes through. It goes out of. Tucumcari, Atham, look it up. It goes through Tucumcari, and there's a, a shot that diagonals through Kansas. It actually is a time saver. It goes through liberal Kansas, and I think you end up in Wichita. Then he hooks up the 35 and 8 coast north. You guys think I'm nerdy, but I do know the United States that well. I'm like, you missed out on everything. You missed out on every. There is so much cool shit you could have seen if it took an extra day. I had buddies who would let you sleep on their couch. No. Because he lost the will to live. He lost the will to live. There's no other thing. It's all robot. And then it's like, what happened? Now, I don't know. I don't know. And that's why I'm just as upset about it. But it's like, what happened to the individual? What happened to that guy or gal that was like, adventure someone, do this and do that? I don't know what happens, man. But it does. And so what you really got to do, and especially nowadays, I guess, because everyone's on the internet now, the new optimal form of finding friends is you find them on the internet, you exchange banter, and this happens commonly where people would meet me and like, well, you're just like you are on the internet. I'm like, uh, yeah, because I'm one, fucking awesome, and two, I ain't got time to be anybody else. And you'll find out who your real friends are. And if you and your wife are dinks and you ain't got the money, or I'm sorry, you, you do have the money, you do have the time, you do have the flexibility. Yeah, you're going to go there. But that's how you meet them. You just meet them on the internet. And you got to kind of be careful a little bit. Like, you don't want to just, like, friend everybody on the internet. But you watch and read. Like, that guy's kind of cool. And you exchange in direct messages. And you develop a rapport with one another. And then you find, yeah, th these are cool cats. These are pretty, you know, Heckloff was like that. Heckloff was all. You know, he, he, when you met him, he was he was the nerdy, geeky comic book guy. You know, yeah, I like Peckloff. Yeah, he's a cool guy. And that's it. But they're not going to be part of your local cabal of friends. Uh, I, as I've said before, I've had local friends that I've seen less than people. I've seen 2,000 miles away. I've seen Baldoni more regularly. I've seen my buddy Pence over in Oregon. Um, or I've even seen TJ Martinell that I've had friends literally 10 miles away. Uh, but that's that's the new friendship. And since you have no kids, you don't want to have kids, that is the biggest frontier in the struggle. Like, okay, where do we find other people? It's not the only thing. You and your wife have yourself. That's great. But 
where do you fight? You got to go, man. You got to go get them. And I won't lie to you, after a while, it gets tiring. It's not that it's too expensive. But after a while, just traveling all over the place, it, it takes time. It's great at first. You're like doing road trips. I'm like, oh, let's crash it. Let's check it out. But after a while, you, you yourself will get old too. You yourself will lose energy. This is me coming off of Moab. We did 50 miles in four days. I kicked a lot of ass. But you'll lose your energy too. You will. And then you'll be like, oh, I just want to sit. And then I hope to God that your wife is a wonderful woman because that's all you got. That really is. That, that, that really is. And I've seen people like the great one who doesn't have the money, but they got the time and the flexibility where they're perfectly happy on their own. And so you almost have to, you have to be comfortable in your own skin no matter what, but then you really have to be comfortable with your own skin. And the great one is like that. Um, Piggott is like that. Uh, and because you will spend more time and energy trying to meet friends and trying to make friends and get them to go and hang out, and it's just going to tax you. And as you get older, you get less and less energy, and I'd save it for stuff that has a positive ROI, not banging your wall against a head. So limit your expectations. Bring them in line with reality. Yes, bring the war to other people. Go there. But after a while, you too will get sick and tired. Like, I haven't been to Phoenix in a long time. It's not because I don't love my friends in Phoenix. Oh, I love them. I love them to death. <clears throat> but as I'm getting older, I go from Albuquerque Adams Place. So it's like, okay, I could go to the Southern Command straight, or I could drop the two-hour detour to Phoenix. But even when I'm in Phoenix, you know what? I still got to go to everybody else's place. They don't come to the hotel. They don't come hiking with me. Tell them Mr. Lee would come hiking with me if he's not working. But you're literally dropping in on other people who are in their own little world, busy with their own little lives, just trying to get by. And it's like, hey, do you want to go hike Superstition Mountains? Do you want to go to Miami, which is a town in Arizona, not the city of Miami in Florida? There's a town called Miami. We'll do some hiking up there in uh, Peralta Mountains. You want to you do Thompson Peak? You'll get con, but everybody else, no, nope, they're, they're just not there. They're just, oh, yeah, maybe we get dinner sometime. Yeah, hey, how's, how's things? All right, okay. I'll hop back in my car. All right, you have fun. And go plug yourself back in. And then you and you go up to Vegas. And then you hike by yourself. <laughs> Fuck it, ain't nobody else coming. Let's push this fucker as far as we could go. Full throttle. <laughs> Running up mountains. And then people are like, why do you hike up mountains? What's the rush? Why do you take it in? Like, I got that. Everybody else operates so slow. All right. Any super chats? Yes, we do have one from Classic Bassman. Five bucks. I'm 25. I'm seeing my friends getting married and having kids. All I really see is divorce courts and broken homes. Yeah. No, that's, that's where at least, at least 60% of them are going to end up. At least. Not your fault, dude. Not your fault. All right. So there you go. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. Got a couple more videos. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.